<laughs> it's so funny when you think about. I mean, did you buy the first Boston record? Oh God, yeah. I yeah. bought the bought the first Boston record, and it was one of the biggest influences on me in terms of uh, songwriting and trying to achieve right. a better guitar tone and production and all that stuff. Yeah, of wow. course. And then you get to sit backstage or wherever, right, in, in backyards probably, and talk to him about it, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy. Here I am, you know, playing with you know one of my musical you know, influences on, on such a level. I mean, they'd be right up there in, in my top 10 list in terms of influential albums. Sure. That would be on the top 10 list. And, and here I am in the band performing, playing these guitar parts and singing these parts. And it's just, it was, it was, there were many pinch me moments, you know? So did you talk to him about, you know, I think, I know that he always said that Don't Look Back was never finished. And then the, what, the third record took another 10 years or some ridiculous amount of time. But did you ever talk to him about that sort of stuff and why? I mean, you know, come on, that's that's the top of the game right there because they're selling more records than anybody and they can't put a record out because, again, this is me talking with people that I know. He can't put the record out because he can't be happy with it, you know? Yeah, we, we talked in passing. I mean, we didn't really get into it and sit there for hours and go on and on and on about it. But uh, Tom and I really... This is just my perspective of Tom and my view, and from what I know of Tom and what he shared with me, he 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 put it this way: he doesn't let a lot of people into his world, and you know, very very few people have ever come into his world. Yep. And in other words, his private world yep. of, mm -hmm. of being invited over to his house and having dinner with him and whatnot. Very few people. Okay, you could probably count them on maybe two hands. Wow, wow. And I was one of those people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just really hit it off. And I think the reason why we really hit it off, not only because we were both going through the pain that we were going through and we were, we were there for each other, but we're so much alike in the sense that we are both uh, incredible perfectionists uh, to the sense of, you know, maybe I know I'm ADHD and I know I'm OCD. I can't sit here and say that he's ADHD or OCD, but I know that he's an extreme perfectionist. And and I am too, to the to the point where it, I think sometimes literally drives us crazy. Because we want, it's never good enough. And I, it, the difference between Tom and I, though, is I, I think I know a little clearer or, or understand a little better when to say, okay, good enough is good enough <laughs> right you know we got it we got to wrap this thing up you know and yeah. uh and, and you know instead of taking 10 years to make a striper record we might we might take a year you know right. my, my book and solo record have been in the works for almost two years now so <laughs> but uh it, we're a lot alike in that sense and and i can relate to that because you, you i want it i don't want to release anything unless it's it's perfect yeah 